Dimensioning in SketchUp is quite intuitive. There are two different styles of dimensions, three-point and two-point, depending on whether you're dimensioning from point to point or along an existing edge. Let's do the point to point dimension first. Press D to activate the dimension tool. You wouldn't know that you're in this tool because the cursor looks just like the select tool arrow. I'll click the first point here at this endpoint, the second point up here at this endpoint, and the third point will locate the leader line of the dimension. Where that is depends on exactly how I move the cursor. I can dimension parallel to the edge in this purple direction. I can dimension in the blue direction, in the red direction, or even in the green direction. It all depends on how I move the cursor, and it's different every time depending on your point of view and the angles involved. I'll click up here to dimension parallel to the edge. Immediately after I lay that dimension down, the cursor goes back to the arrow. But if I hover it over the leader line, it changes into the move symbol. I can then click to pick it up and move it to a different dimension if I didn't do it right initially. So the dimension system is incredibly flexible and very simple to operate. There's only one command after all, D. If I want to dimension an existing edge, it's even easier. All I have to do is hover over the edge until it highlights in blue, and then click. I can then pull off a dimension in two different directions. I'll click over here to set it down in the red direction. You can also dimension arcs and circles. I'll click on this arc, and I can set in a radius value. Click again to set it down. The circle works very much the same. The difference here is that it actually dimensions the diameter, which is twice the radius. I can click two points across an open space to measure a clear dimension. I'll click again to set down the leader line. Here I'll dimension this edge and match up the leaders together. Notice that they snap together. Dimensions are typically associated with the geometry to which they point. What this means is the following. I'll press P to activate the push-pull tool. Click on this face and change the proportion of the box. The dimension automatically updates. Triple-click the box to select all connected. Press M for the move tool and move it over. The clear dimension automatically updates. You can break this association type of behavior by double-clicking on a dimension and you'll see that you have the ability to edit the text. Let's say that I wanted this to actually be 7 foot 6. I'll type that in here and press return. So the dimension tells me that, even though it's not really telling me the geometrical truth. This can become dangerous later if someone goes back in later and changes the proportion of the object. The dimension no longer updates because the association is broken. You can change the way the dimensions appear in model info. Remember, model info is specific to this SketchUp file. If you want to change the way the dimensions appear in all future files, you have to edit the model info in your template file. I'll just add an additional dimension here along this vertical edge and pull it off to the side. It's a little bit hard to read because of how small that dimension is, and we have options as to how the dimension text appears in model info. I'll press Command Shift I to open the dialog box and I'll go to the dimensions page. Here we have the ability to change the font, the font size, and the font color here. On the Mac, the fonts are controlled in an operating system dialog box that lets you select the font, the typeface, if any, and the height. The color of all the dimensions is controlled right here. The terminators on the end of the leader lines, namely the arrowheads or the slashes or dots, are controlled here in this pop-up list. Right now we're looking at closed arrowheads. Let me just navigate so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, so let's say we want to change that. If you make a change here, nothing seems to happen. And that's because you need to have the dimensions that you want to affect pre-selected. A quick way of doing that is to click Select All Dimensions. Then you can make a change and then update the dimensions by clicking on the Adjacent button. Now we're looking at Architectural Slashes. You can look at Dots, Closed or Open Arrowheads. It's just your preference. You can even have None. I'll stick with Closed Arrowheads and update everything. 
The dimension text can be either aligned to the screen, which it is now, where all the text is horizontal, or it can be aligned to the dimension line itself in different ways. If we align it to the dimension line, this is what it looks like. It's aligned to the axis that the dimension is in. It's a little bit harder to read, perhaps, but it does give you a better indication of which way the dimension is running. And you have the ability to set that outside the dimension line, above, or centered. If you want to have an exception on one particular dimension, you can select it, make some type of change, and update. The expert dimension settings are here on this button that opens up this tray. Let me just navigate a little bit more so we can see these dimensions down here. We have the option to show the radius R or the diameter prefix DIA. If we uncheck that, they disappear. You can hide dimensions when they're foreshortened in perspective, and you can control the granularity of when that happens here. You can also hide dimensions when they're too small. This one over here is fairly small, and if I drag this slider up, it's the first one to disappear. If I keep going, the next smallest dimension will disappear, and then the next one, and so on. This is useful to highlight non-associated dimensions in red, and now we know that this might not actually be telling us the truth. If we want to change that, the thing to do is to delete this dimension and then recreate it. You can get specific information on a dimension in Entity Info. I'll select a dimension and press Command-I. Here we can see the font is Tahoma 12-point. We can make a change here, or we can expand the palette here by clicking this downward-facing arrow. And then we have all the information that you find in Model Info, but here it's just specific to this one dimension. I could change the endpoints, and the text position, and so on. This actually gives us more options than we have in Model Info because we have the ability to pop it over to one side here. We can move the text independently of the way that the dimension is aligned. So this can be useful in exceptional situations when you don't quite have enough room for a dimension. You can go into Entity Info and make the room by moving the text over. One thing you can't do with dimensions in SketchUp is dimension and angular relationship. Say I want to dimension this slope angle against the vertical line. That's just not possible, unfortunately. Instead, I can call that out with some screen text, which I'll show you how to do in the next video. With my shortcuts, T refers to the tape measure, Option T is screen text, and Control T is 3D text. Press Option T to activate the screen text tool, and you'll see that the cursor changes. I'll click on this edge to refer to that, and then I'll click again over here to set down the leader. It suggests a dimension, perhaps of the length of this edge, but I'm just going to type in slope 4 colon 12 to refer to the fact that this is a rise of 4 inches and a run of 12 inches. Click off to the side rather than pressing return. If you press return, you can enter another line of text, which is not my current intention. I'll go back. If I click off to the side, I complete that, and then I move on to the next leader. You can make a leader that has multiple arrowheads by clicking another point, and then clicking down here very carefully at this point. And then I can put in a space. No text, just a space. And that will allow me to put in the actual leader line without any text. If you press Escape, you'll actually cancel the command. So using a space is kind of a trick to allow you to put in multiple leaders. But this doesn't work that well, actually, because if you orbit, you'll see that the leaders are actually not in the same place. They only line up in one orientation. Let's say I want to maintain this and print this out as a drawing. What I should do now is create a scene that saves this location. I'll go to the Window menu and open the Scenes window, and I'll just have everything selected here and click Plus. This will create a scene which I have access to at the top here. I can then orbit to some other orientation, click the button, and I'll go right back to that position.
So this is good in scene one, but when I'm working in another orientation, I don't really want to see these two leaders. So what you need to do here is create some layers. I'll go to the Layers palette, and I've already made a dim layer. I'd like to select all the dimensions and place them on that layer. A quick way of doing that is to open Model Info and utilize this button that selects all the dimensions. I'll close Model Info. Then I'll go into Entity Info by pressing Command-I. Here I'll change the layer of the selection to Dim. So all of those dimensions are on that layer, but this is not. I need to select this manually, hold down Shift and get that, go into Entity Info and change that to Layer Dim as well. Now I can turn off Layer Dim and I don't see any of my dimensions or screen text. I can save this as a scene, Scene 2. So now I can go between Scene 1 and Scene 2 where I have dimensions and everything's lined up, and Scene 2 where I'm working. Quite a flexible system when you use screen text and dimensions in conjunction with scenes and layers. You can also create text without a leader. Let me just go back to scene one. I'll press option T to activate the screen text tool. And here I'll just click a point off to the side, not referring to any geometry. SketchUp is smart enough to realize that I'm not pointing to anything, so I must just want to type in some text. Here I can type in dimensioning return tutorial and then I'll click off to the side to complete the command. As the name suggests, screen text is glued to the screen and it remains there no matter how I navigate. I can select it and move it. So screen text is great basically for identifying the drawing that you're working in and just putting it over on the side. Another way of doing this is with a watermark which is something that I'll talk more about when we get into styles.